I'm on the trail of the old Gann Rail Route between Port Augusta and Alice Springs. My goal is to provide a visual record of as many of the sidings, fetless cottages and other rail infrastructure that I can identify between those two places. Many of the places I've visited are accessible to any who have the means to get to them and are in close vicinity to the major road networks of the state of South Australia. Others are on private pastoral land and I have sought and received permission to access them from the various landowners and or managers. In every case, I have been welcomed and have received the greatest hospitality from them and I have been able to gain access to some wonderfully forgotten ruins that not many people get to see. Previously in episode 5, we visited the Farina Railway Station, the Mari Railway Station, Kalana Siding, Wenjiana Fetless Cottage, Alberry Creek Siding, Bupichi Siding, the Gregory Bridge, Lake Eyre Siding and the Kurdimurka Fetless Cottage. Before I go any further, I should acknowledge the now glaring error throughout my exploration of the old Gan route. And that is that I've been mispronouncing the name of the down thing. It's pronounced as Gan, as in the Afghan Express, and not Garn, as I've been doing. I've corrected this embarrassing anomaly in any voiceover that I've made, but I'm afraid any two camera footage made at the time has my bumbling mistake recorded for posterity. Sorry about that. Stay with me now as we jump back into the time machine, rewind six weeks and return to our August trip taken in the sidings between Farina and Abminga. As the intro explained, I finished off the last episode at Kurdimurka. However, before we move on from there, some thousand metres west of the siding is a major piece of GAN infrastructure, that of the rail bridge that spans the Stewart Creek, which is a major channel that floods whenever Lake Eyre South sees significant water. At 435 metres, it's second to and only 152 metres shorter than the old Jabukana Bridge. This one, however, lacks the iron framework that covers its big brother, but is nevertheless impressive. We're now approaching what's marked as Margaret Siding. It's only some 10 miles or 16 kilometres further on from Kurdimurka. And this is the usual distance that these camps were initially established at, as five miles either side of the siding was the accepted distance that a work gang could travel on a pump car each morning and evening. This would have proved a definite asset here when Lake Eyre floods. The Margaret overflow would probably cut the line here, and having two gangs either side of the break would see it fixed quicker. That's just my thought though. Okay, this is at uh, Coward Springs. The old garn came through here. It's renowned for its hop spars and mound springs, as would be evidenced by that large palm in the background there. Down here is a restored uh, engine master's cottage or something. We'll have a look at that. Well, Coward Springs didn't have as much GAN stuff as I'd hoped. There's no line here, and apart from that little trolley with the info board, a restored station master's residence, and this house, which dates back to 1888. 
It's a two-roomed stone cottage, used as a rest haven for the train crews at the end of their shift. Unfortunately, my little Osmo pocket doesn't have real good light gathering qualities, so the footage inside is underwhelming to say the least, and therefore not much of it. to Beresford and the next siding on uh, the Garn line. It's another nice set of ruins. The actual Fetless Cottage has a roof on it which makes it um, just so much more different to almost every other one apart from a couple. Also features a, a water tank with a softener as well as same as Kurt Murta. Oh my goodness it's been a bit boggy in here. scene of utter devastation. Tank and softer. Standby off to the left and the Beresford siding. reasons that I can't fathom, whoever owns this land has seen fit to completely denude the building of everything that used to surround it, and left it sitting here in stark isolation. The few trees around it, and the rail iron fence with its row of pitch pines, are all gone. These few images from a previous visit illustrate the sharp contrast. I'd love to know why they did this. Okay, it's uh, morning obviously, uh, we're leaving Beresford over an overnight stay, only a few corellas to annoy us, they weren't that bad. Well, we're, we're in a bit of baby's nest. Well, we are, yeah, we camped right under a nesting pair, but they were not happy about us being there. Off to our um, right is the ruins of the Strangways siding. It's 
see a little bit of brickwork. There's uh, lots of workings here, um, very old, some of it. Also been uh, the site of several um, what looks like gravel quarries, so a lot of work has been done. The ruins and the railway site himself is gone. This looks to have been a dam of some sort. It's got piping coming in and out. It looks reasonably old. But uh, generally, not a lot to indicate a railway line. I'll see if I can locate the line of the actual line. My GPS says it's over in this direction, but uh, we shall soon see. Well, this area that uh, looks the most likely sort of area from a satellite picture is the other. There's some sleepers, old sleepers laying around here. A little bit of concrete formwork over here. And uh, other rubble. The actual line of the garn, I believe, is right in front of me here. gone down in that direction. A dog spike would give it away, but of course there's none to be seen. Okay, well that's a strangway siding as best I can find it. Rapatana was the site of another fitless cottage. Sadly, it's mainly just a pile of rubble. But you can still appreciate what was once here if you're familiar with the architecture. After all, they didn't differ too far from the theme. Its main claim to fame is uh, the nearby wreck of a 1948 Ford sedan. It too has suffered from a fair bit of abuse and neglect. The fact that I know what it is is due to the iconic signage that the late Adam Plate from the Pink Roadhouse placed here and at many other points along the track. Unfortunately, the one that was here has been souvenired, and most of the left are faded and deteriorating. These last few pics are from our 2014 trip. Incidentally, it was the late Adam Plate who proposed the name Udnadatta Track in the 1970s. Bet you didn't know that. nothing of the old Gann Railway left at William Creek. From satellite imagery you can discern the line and I note that the place even sports a turning triangle so the train must have terminated here at some stage. I guess the siding has been obliterated by the small outdoor museum which apart from the standpipe I saw as we arrived has centred its attention on Woomera's space debris and local identities. Creek, the next siding on my list was Anna Creek. However, it wasn't until we got home 
that I discovered there was a siding in between, that of Douglas siding. Obviously, not knowing it was there, I never went looking for it. And searching later at home, I couldn't discern any ruins on Google Earth, so I'll just have to do a ground reconnaissance on another trip in the future. So, off to Anna Creek we went. This was the second of the sightings that were away from the main thoroughfare and for which I had previously contacted the owners, seeking permission to come onto their land and visit the ruins. I have to give a big shout out here to Matt and Chantel at Anna Creek Station for the great hospitality and the marvellous tour of their bit of heaven. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, we've turned off. We ooted at a track and now on Anna Creek Station track, heading down to Anna Creek Siding. We're actually off-road for the first time. Mm -hmm. Well, sort of. We found the Anna Creek ruins. These are absolutely stunning. It's amazing how well they survive when vandals aren't, don't have access to them. Yeah, even without its roof, it's uh, done very, very well. Great ruins and still lots of infrastructure left laying around. Fences, old bits of railway line, there's a bridge down yonder. I think I've seen a ruin like this that still has all the timber framework for the doors and windows. Paint's peeling though. Here's just more examples of the base crumbling. Chantel at the station mentioned they were seeking funds to try and preserve it, and I note that some stabilisation work has already been done, as evidenced by the uh, fresh rendering there. It's great to see private individuals on whose land these are on have an interest in preserving these great relics. This picture shows the Fettler gang going past these very cottages from as recently as 1980.
track and now I'm going to take a turn to go into Box Hill Station siding. Somewhere here. We gave up trying to forge a track between uh, Box Creek and Bothana Ruins and we turned to the Udnadatta track just to drive along and, and take the direct route in uh, down to it from the Udnadatta track. We're 2.7 kilometres. This would be Borthana siding. Susan will be excited, there's intact insulators, well, semi-intact. 
considerably, considerably better uh, preserved than Box Creek, but not as good as Anna Creek. This one has indoor plants at least. Some window frames. Stand. Let's see if I can get my drone to fly this time and get some aerial shots of this. out of me at Anna Creek which is a real shame because that's probably the best garden ruin I've ever seen. Very annoying. No tank for this one. 